on the taskbar too, 100%, scrolling back over to the left. Oh, we're at the top this time, so we're up here. So I'm on uh, 724, and 724 says paid for fuel and oil. So that's going to be a pretty, pretty normal expense. Uh, so we're going to have cash. Is it affected? Yeah, we paid it with cash. So cash is a debit. We're going to make it go down by doing the opposite thing to it, which in this case is a credit. So I'm going to copy this. Here's the account. We're going to put it on the bottom. Right click, paste it. One, two, three. How much did that cost us? We're going to say negative 40. And we're going to debit something 40. So, and notice I did that with a formula now. So a lot of times if we wanted to use a formula, we could say negative of this number instead of equals instead of typing it in there or of course we can just type it in there and i i formulas aren't necessary really here but they i really do recommend them on the general ledger okay so what's the debit going to be we paid for um, gas and oil probably an expense in this case because we already used that therefore if we go down here and the expenses is down here in this darker blue area because that's revenue and these are expenses how about auto expense now notice it's the it's the prerogative of the bookkeeper to see do I want to break out gas, break out oil, break out repairs in the three separate accounts or do we want to lump them all up into auto expense and that's a question for different companies can do in different ways uh, but in this case we're going to lump it into auto expense so I'm going to copy that we're going to paste that one two three right here there's the transaction and uh, notice expenses have debit balances all these expenses only have debit balances they only go up we only pay the mechanic the mechanic never pays up us Therefore, we're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which in this case would be another debit. All right, we're going to bring this count this down, the taskbar back down to 70. Scroll back over here. Now, we are looking for auto expense. So auto expense is down here. It's our third dark blue account. So we've got assets, liabilities, equity. Then we're in the dark blue, so we're going to have to go way over here. There's auto expense, so it's down here on AN27. AN27 equals... I'm going to hold down the left arrow this time. I'm looking for that 40 over there. I'm holding down the left arrow. Here's the last transaction. Here's that 40 we want. And enter. Notice it's in the debit column because there are always debits because it's an expense and the mechanic doesn't pay us ever. It only goes up. And there's the 7, I mean the 120. Here's the 120. Now let's post the other side. The other side being, of course, to the checking account. Checking account is our first account. Here's our asset. Checking account is going to go down in U18. U18 equals, we're going to point to that 40 here. There's a debit. That's a credit we're posting to it. Those are opposites. Therefore, the amount will go down from 5280 to 5240. There it is here. Here it is there. All right, let's make this large again, going back up to 100%. Scrolling over. Next transaction. I think we can squeeze one more in down here before we have to open up some more cells. And that one will be on 724 as well. And on 724. Complete a job on account to be paid in the future and invoice P company. All right, so we did a job on account. So is cash affected? No, because we did it on account and we're going to get paid in the future. We just invoiced them. But we did get something when we do the work. We assume that we are going to receive a receivable. So we got an IOU. We assume that we got something. We got an IOU. We'd rather have the cash, but we got this other asset, meaning we're going to get cash in the future. We got a promise. All right, so it's an asset just like cash and it has a debit balance, we're going to make it go up because people owe us more money. And therefore, we're going to do the same thing to it, which in this case is another debit. So I'm going to copy that. We're going to scroll down here. I'm going to put it in H27. Right click, paste it, one, two, three. And the amount will be uh, 425. So if we debit 425, we're going to credit 425. I'm going to do that with a negative and then point to that 425 and that'll give us a bracketed 425. Now the only question is what should that account be why will people pay us money in the future because we earned revenue so we earned revenue over here so revenue has a credit balance it only goes up if we do work we only get more revenue our clients only pay us we don't pay the clients unless like we break something but if we broke something it would actually be an expense it would bring down net income but revenue only goes up so we're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it which in this case is a credit and we already knew that because we debited cash so we're going to credit revenue down here in H28. All right, so let's make this smaller. We're going to go back down to 70%. We're going to scroll over here. We're going to record the receivable. So there's the receivable. It's our second account on the trial balance. Therefore, it's going to be our second account on the general ledger. Here it is uh, in X11. 
equals, we're going to point to that 425, a debit is the same as a debit, which is what the accounts table count is, making it go up from 1020 to 1445. Then we got the revenue here. Here's our revenue. Here's our revenue here. It's going to be our first darker blue account. So that means it's going to be way over here, assets, liabilities, then equity, then revenues over here. Notice we only have credits in the credit column because revenue only goes up. And we're in OAO11 equals, and then we're going to select the left arrow, scroll on over, scroll on down, and we're down to the last transaction. We're looking for that 425 in J28 and enter. And we can see that we have a, a J28, that's negative 425, it makes the revenue go up, like revenue always does. Now it's a credit, a credit does the same as everything, that's the same thing to it, makes it go up. Another credit made the credit go up in the credit direction, not the negative direction. Excel sees it as a negative number, I know, but we see it as a credit going up. That made net income go up, and net income minus the expenses means that, or sorry, that made revenue go up over here, minus the expenses also made net income go up to 1185 that is income revenue is beating expenses by 1185 all right going to make this large again back to 100 scroll back over here and we're at the end of these rows again so oh one other thing we need to do we got the 425 and who did we receive it from we received that from job p company so therefore if we have the receivable here uh once again we're going to ask well who owes us money people owe us 1445 well who owes us the money can't see it on the gl so we're going to scroll down and we're going to do it on the subsidiary ledger the accounts payable subsidiary ledger so we're going to go down here to cell t38 and we're going to say this equals and then we're going to point to that 425 so we're just recording the same information enter down in this section here so now uh, we did two jobs, and this is important. Now we can see two jobs that we did. Uh, P owes us $1,145. Before we do another job, we might want some kind of down payment at some point. So then we're going to scroll back up, and let's take a look at the next transaction. Obviously, just to double check this. Now we can look at all of our accounts, and we're going to say these are the people that owe us money. Adds up to $1,445. That ties out to $1,445 here, which ties out to the $1,445 on the trial balance. Okay, now. Let's uh, open some more accounts so that we can see and enter more information. So notice what we have. We have H, I, J, K, Q, and there's, again, there's some cells that are hidden there. So I'm not going to go unhide between these. So I'm going to go from J to Q because K is such a small cell. So we're just going to put our cursor on J. So I'm going to highlight the entire column, scroll over to Q, let go. So all of those are highlighted right click on the selected area and go down to unhide so now we can see those cells that we need to be working in then we're going to go to column uh, j and start in column j i'm going to hide these cells we don't need to see them anymore so we're going to put our cursor on uh, j scroll over to column f let go right click on selected area and we're going to hide these cells so now we'd like to see just cells l m n and O as we go so we can see as much information on the same screen as possible. So we are now on 726 where it says we completed a job on account to be paid in the future uh, and invoiced M company. So we need we did another job. So is cash affected? And once again, no, we did the job and we're gonna get paid in the future. So if we did the job, we're gonna say we earned revenue and we're going to get in the future we have right now at the point of the job we're assuming we got something we got something intangible that being a promise to pay so uh we're going to say we got an iou so there's the 1000 uh 140 it's a debit and we need to make it go up because people owe us more money so we're going to do the same thing to it which in this case would be another debit so i'm going to copy that we're going to put that on top in m5 right click paste one two three and the amount will be uh, 150 in this case. We're going to put 150 here. Then we're going to credit something for 150. I'm going to make that a negative of this number. We need something for a negative of 150, a credit of 150. Then the only question is what should that account be? And the account will be why are people going to pay us money in the future? Because we earned revenue in this case. So that's going to be revenue that we are earning. Notice that revenue has a credit balance. It only goes up. Our customers only pay us. We don't pay the customer. 
unless again we broke something but that's an expense that we would have to pay so the revenue has a credit balance we're going to make it go up by do the same thing to it which in this case would be another credit so we're going to copy that and we're going to paste that one two three right here and notice we already knew that we were going to credit it because we debited of course the asset first all right so i'm going to make this smaller we're going back down in the taskbar to 70 percent down here I'm going to scroll on over a bit so we can see more of our general ledger there's our receivable it's our second account so here's the second account on the trial balance here's the second account on the general ledger so we are now in x12 equals and then we're going to point to this 150 in uh in five and that will make this account go up all right and then the second account is revenue so revenues here it's going to be our first revenue account down here so we're going to scroll over we got assets and then liabilities then equity then revenues way over here and notice it only goes up in the credit direction and we're going to make it go up again with another credit because credits and credits make credits go up because it's the same thing to it so we are in a o 12 equals i'm going to use the arrows for this one i could just point that 150 but i'm going to use the arrows this time and scroll on over so we can see the actual revenue here and there's the account we want and enter so we can see it's uh 06 in there went up from uh 1060 1695 to 1845 and that 1845 is also here that also brings up net income by revenue less the expenses revenue over credit less the expenses of debits means the credits are winning by 1335 that is income not a loss note that we also have our receivable count was affected so in our receivable count we're going to say uh how much do people owe us people owe us 1595 well who owes us the money and when will they pay us and in order to answer that question we could go to the gl but that gives us detail by date not by customer the account given us uh, information by customers called the subsidiary ledger so that same amount we're going to have to post down here uh we did work for m company and so we're going to be in x44 I'm going to say equals i want to post this same information that we have in the gl but in, instead of just by date we want it by customer so we're going to say there it is and if we add those up that adds up to 1595 which ties out to the amount in the general ledger which ties out to the amount on the trial balance and therefore we are good i'm going to make this large again we're going to go back down to the taskbar over here make this back up to 100 percent so we can see the screen we can actually read some things in it and we're going to scroll over to the next 726 and it says we received cash from p company for work done in the past all right so is cash affected first question and we're going to say yeah cash affected we received cash and so cash has a debit balance we're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it which in this case would be another debit so i'm going to copy the cash count we're going to put that on top we're going to right click going to paste it one two three the amount that we received 720 so 720 was paid we're going to credit something for 720 you could put a negative and type in the number i'm going to put a negative of left arrow up arrow that number enter all right so there's the debit there's the credit what will that account be then well why are people paying us money because we did work but we didn't earn the revenue now we didn't do the work now we did the work in the past and so we have people owing us money we already recorded the fact that they owe us money we put that in our iou account the people that owe us money that's called the receivable account so in the receivable account that represents people owing us money now they paid us so that needs to go down because they don't owe us anymore because they paid us so that has a debit we're going to make it go down by doing the opposite thing to it which in this case would be a credit so we're going to copy that we're going to put that in m9 right click paste one two three so what in essence is happening here we're getting one asset we're losing the other asset we're getting a better asset losing the worser asset because if that's a word because uh you know people owed us money now they paid us now we're getting the cash asset going up other asset the iou going down all right so let's post this out we're going to make this go down in the task bar back down to 70 we're going to scroll over a bit and we are now posting we see cash right here is our first account these are going to be a nice easy one because they're our first two accounts in the gl so we can see them right next to each other so cash is the first account here it is on the gl there it is we're going to put the next transaction in cell t19 equals and we're going to point to that 720 making the debit bounce go up and the debit direction to 5960 all right here's the credit to the receivable account that's our second account up here and there's our second account over here in uh receivables y13 and so we're going to say this equals and point to the 720 
this is a debit we are crediting the debit account that's the opposite thing to it making it go down so it's the first time we actually got paid on work we did on account which is exciting because we were getting worried that we we're never going to get paid on the work that we uh, didn't collect cash for and now we are so that's good so we got the money there now note that we